This is a typical stand of loblolly pines that grow throughout southeastern United States. The loblolly pine is the most important commercial forestry species in this part of the country and accounts for billions of dollars of revenue. A most recent study completed by North Carolina State University indicates that man-made air pollution is suppressing the growth of these trees by as much as 20 percent. Dr. Robert Brook is an environmental scientist and a professor of plant pathology and forestry at NCSU. He has been working on this particular problem for many years. Although the severity of the pollution problem has not diminished, he indicates that there are certain solutions on the horizon that show some real promise. We join him in one of the greenhouses on the campus of NCSU where an experiment was conducted on loblolly pine seedlings using a product called Ecomin. The preliminary results of the experiment are impressive. We're standing now in the research greenhouses at North Carolina State University looking at what's left of a fairly large experiment on the loblolly pine. There were about 2,000 trees originally in this experiment, 500 of which belong to each one of these groupings. We have six-month-old seedlings that were not treated at all. We have six-month-old seedlings that were treated with eco rock dust material. We have one-year-old seedlings that were tr not treated at all, the controls here, and one-year-old seedlings that were treated again with approximately seven grams per tube of the eco material. Loblolly pine is, in fact, the most widely grown commercial species here in the southeastern United States, worth literally billions of dollars commercially each year. These are, in fact, how the seedlings are grown. These two taters are called. Once they're grown here, they are then transplanted out into the field and grown for about 15 or 20 years, managed for the purpose of our pulp, paper, and timber industry. Well, very interestingly, we can see some of the results right up front of this experiment. We look over here at a typical tree, six months old, that has received absolutely no fertilizer at all. This is grown in natural field stand loblolly pine soil. We see quite a chlorotic or yellowed crown. We see the relatively short height and in fact the tufts of needles at the top while all the others have senesced or died. Compared to that, we have the six month old trees that have undergone seven grams, that's all, about not to fit the palm of your hand, of the Ecoman rock dust, and we see the lush growth of the tree, the dark green coloration, as we can see, and of course a significant difference in terms of the overall height of these trees. The one-year-old trees are even more dramatic in terms of their coloration. Uh, these trees are not happy. They are quite yellow, tufted, chlorotic in nature. Most of the lower needles, again, have senesced or died from this experiment. As compared to these one-year-old trees receiving the seven grams of the Ecomen, we see the much longer needles. The needle length is approximately 40% greater. We see the dark green coloration and, in fact, the overall height growth that is significantly different. Now, this is important. The reason why this is important is that when we have a healthy seedling going out into the field under pretty harsh conditions, under field growth, these kinds of trees are going to be given a shot in the arm. They're going to grow faster. The actual uh, survival we would anticipate is going to be greater, and hence the overall profitability of growing these trees would additionally be greater. The actual material that was used was a rock dust material that is known as Ecomen. Uh, this particular material is not a classical fertilizer. It is not the nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus that we would normally expect to see in a fertilization trough. Rather, it's ground rock dust with a catalyst in it. And what we believe is happening is that this rock dust material, in fact, is increasing the solubility of the actual nutrients in the soil, increasing the utilization of those nutrients 
It is raising the pH of an already acidic soil, making more nutrients available to the trees, and by adding the 38 trace minerals, not the nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, but all the other essential trace minerals of the tree growth. It seems from these data that we are getting a very pronounced response in the growth of these trees. Additionally, there's one other thing that is worth noting. When we actually remove these trees, I cleaned these up earlier this morning, we see in this non-treated seedling the very dark black stringy root system. The actual roots are dark brown to black in color. But when we look very closely at the short roots, those roots that actually take in the nutrients, both the macro and micronutrients, we see that they again are black and stringy in nature. We compare this to one of our treated trees and we see some dramatic differences. The root system is much larger. It is brown in color, meaning that it has not been affected negatively by the soil conditions. But most importantly, when we look up at these fine, short roots, we see their cream color or white. What that cream color or white coloration actually is are ectomycorrhiza. These ectomycorrhiza are essential fun fungal symbionts that grow on the short roots of all coniferous species, certainly loblolly pine being one of them. And literally 40 years of research in many institutions around the world have shown that these ectomycorrhiza are critical to the health, the well-being, the growth of the tree. They serve a number of purposes. First of all, they increase the amount of uptake of water and of macro and micronutrients to the tree. Additionally, that sheath that surrounds the actual root itself, they actually look like little baseball bats, protects the root system from other fungal and bacterial pathogens that can kill the root system and or stunt the growth of the tree. So we are quite excited about the fact that the enhancement of these mycorrhizal symbionts is taking place with the eco men treated trees, whereas those in our control that have not received the treatments have about 5% or fewer of these roots colonized by ectomycorrhiza. Inversely, our treated trees are 95% plus of the short roots are actually colonized by ectomycorrhiza fungi, showing a distinct benefit to the overall growth of the tree. At this stage of the game, we're analyzing the other large portions of these trees for final data, and when it is done, perhaps we will see that there truly is a statistically significant difference in the overall nutrient status, growth, appearance, root colonization, root growth, and mycorrhizal fungi symbiosis taking place in these experiments.